Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to be talking about how we have hit a major milestone. We have almost been in business for two years in November, like end of November, and we hit 100 five-star reviews. Hooray! We've definitely had more than 100 guests at the house. Yeah, we have 105 officially. Yeah, but we have guests checking in today, so 106. <laughs> it's awesome, it's a milestone that we wanted to hit. We didn't think it was possible, but... We didn't think it was possible to hit 105 stars. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we knew it was possible we were gonna get 100 reviews, but having them all be five stars has been yeah. Kind of crazy. And so we put together a list of like the things that we think helped contribute to getting all of those five star reviews. And we wanted to kind of just lay them out for you and see what you guys think. If there's something you guys are doing, if there's something you can learn from what we're doing, yeah. um, that's great. We're not professionals. We are learning how to do this with you. Yeah. We think the number one thing that has contributed to this has been our constant communication and relationship with our cleaners. A working relationship that we have built with our cleaners. You guys have seen what we've been through if you've yeah. followed us since the beginning of our short-term rental journey. We clean the house ourselves. We found these cleaners. We have gone through ups and downs with them. Mm -hmm. 60 extra dollars for that to happen. We've had conversations, emails, like, just constructive criticism on both sides, really creating and cultivating the relationship that we have today. We gave them a Christmas bonus. Yeah. <laughs> like um, just things that we've done to make sure that our relationship and business working relationship stays good so that we can help them and they can help us. Yeah. But we are constantly communicating with our cleaners. We know there are automated things that can set this up, but our cleaners are more like us where they're kind of like DIY. So it's not like a full business of like a hundred employees, it's like one person. <laughs> yeah, they used to be two and now it's one. The other one moved away, sadly we left her too. Yeah. But that has been really meat and potato of the five star. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna do a video coming up soon showing us, like we've showed you before, mm -hmm. but showing what it's like on the check-in, check-out flip process from our end being, you know, two hours away from our property. So look out for that video coming up in the future. Constant communication also means constant data and photos being yes. sent to us. And if you have multiple listings, of course this is going to be harder for you. Yeah. But if you have like a management company dealing with that, just knowing that they're on top of it and really meticulous and have five stars in cleanliness in their background, mm -hmm. look for those things if you are hiring a management company or somebody to help you with it so that they're zooming in on those photos, making sure they're seeing anything. Like the other day, Michael saw toothpaste on the faucet and I missed it. What happens with us is our cleaner sends us photos when she's done cleaning and she's waiting for laundry to finish up. Thing that sucks about this is it's usually on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, Sundays when we're in the middle of, let's say, baby showers, birthdays, family time. Yeah, and we're like, I'm so sorry, we gotta be rude, but we need to talk with our cleaners. So it's usually around like one or two mm -hmm. in the middle of the day, and they send us about 25, 30 photos, and we just zoom in mm -hmm. on every aspect. We, we know our house, you know your house. Your cleaners, although they know it, you might see things that they don't because you know you get snow blind. Yeah, and they're working quickly because they may have multiple houses. Yeah. So we usually go through and we analyze the photos. If there's anything wrong, we text them right then and there. We've started having our cleaners send us photos of the window sills, mm -hmm. under the beds, underneath the kitchen sink, Just in the fridge sure. and freezer, mm -hmm. um, the backyard front, uh, not the front yard, but yeah. So totally in communication and. We've never had less than a five star on cleanliness and that's yeah. because of our relationship with our cleaner. We try to do a really good job communicating with our guests. Mm -hmm. So one way that we do this, guests check in at weird times, you know, they'll message you at weird times. I mean, most of the bookings we get are either at like 5 a.m. Or like midnight. Like or like middle midnight. of the night. People are on their computer with a glass of wine, you know, or just waking up and getting things on their list done. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we are able to respond to our guests in a timely manner. Obviously, we have the one property right now. Yeah. If we had multiple, this would be 
a way different thing. Yeah, we'd probably be chickens with our heads cut off. We already are sometimes. But but, but this is why we say five stars because like these are the things that have led to us getting five star reviews. Mm-hmm. So we have, when we go to sleep, we have our phone set on nighttime mode, sleep mode, but we allow Airbnb to mm-hmm. come through and our ring cameras on the house. Yeah. Anything that's related to the short term rental is sent through push notification. Yeah. We keep our phones on vibrate so we can at least hear what's happening. And if we need to pop in and like message someone yeah. or whatever, a lot of times if someone books in the middle of the night, they get an automa- automated message from us. This is more so for like check in, check out. Yeah. So like if people are checking in and for some reason they're delayed. Or the lock doesn't work, God forbid. Yeah. Like we're able to respond as accordingly. And this brings us to number three. Don't be a creep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that. What I mean by that is don't be watching on all your cameras all the time. It's yeah. too much. You've got to let go a little bit. And that's one thing that we had to learn is to let go and to trust. And we've said this before the only time that we look at the cameras is during check in, making sure they can get in. As soon as the lock turns, we turn off the camera. What happens when we know we have a guest checking in? We wait for the notification for motion at our house. Mm -hmm. And when they go to unlock the door, we'll watch. If they can't get it, which happens a lot, for some reason, people just can't understand directions. You got to prepare yourself for that. We wait until they message us. Yeah. Because we don't want it to seem like we're over, but we're like watching over them. Lurk much. We want, at least the way our place is set up, we want them to feel like, it's their own home Mm -hmm. and they're having like their own private experience. Yeah, so they'll message us. We could easily be like, hey, saw you couldn't get in, but oh, no, no, we don't do that. We've heard other hosts who have done that and it's become, they're already turned off. Yeah, it's like an ick, like right when you arrive, like, oh, they're watching me, where else are they watching me? You know what I mean? Sorry. Now I'm kind of creeped out. So that's one thing that we do, is we wait until the guest messages us, unless there's something insane. We like to go above and beyond and we've created a guidebook through our Airbnb app and we're able to share that automatically. It sends out an hour after check-in. We've talked about this before. It's full of things to go see around the area in Joshua Tree, in Yucca Valley, and 29 Palms. We've got restaurants, we've got hiking, we've got shopping mm-hmm. in there. Coffee shops. Anything that a guest or us included would want to know about in the area if you didn't have time to research or if you're just coming for the night and you're like, oh, there's a pizza place down the street. We'll go there, how mm-hmm. fun. They play live music. Like we tell you all of those things in this guidebook and that gets sent out one hour after check-in. And we don't have a physical copy in the house. A lot of people have asked us about, you know, what do you have in your binder and all this stuff. And in today's digital age, and especially post COVID, there's a lot of QR codes and things like that for menus and guidebooks, et cetera. So we keep it online because when you're out and about exploring, you can just open your app and there it is. Mm-hmm. You don't have to take the binder with you. You don't have to take pictures of it. It's just with you all the time. And restaurants close and open and their their times change. So having it digital is easier for us to upgrade it. I know my entire life growing up, going to Airbnbs or short-term rentals, we'd flip through the binder and it'd be like super outdated. Like yeah. we'd call a place and it'd be closed or something like totally it wouldn't exist anymore. So we think that that little aspect goes a long way, even though it's automated. Yeah. So the guest thinks that you're communicating with them, even if they don't check in right at check-in time, which is four for us. If they don't check in at four, if they check in at seven, we send them one at five. It doesn't seem creepy because we're like, hope check-in went smoothly. Yeah. If you want to explore, here's the guidebook. So they're like, oh, they're not like paying attention to the cameras. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if people really think all that. I do. I I know, I know. (laughs) We think it goes a long way because we do get reviews like, thank you so much for the awesome, you know, local recommendations. Another thing we have talked a lot about on our channel is deep cleaning our house. We always have been involved in the cleaning process because... And the maintenance process. Yeah, definitely the maintenance process. Mm -hmm. Again, this is our only property. If we get another one, which we've been talking a lot about, things may change. But right now, we are the maintenance and the deep cleaners. Mm -hmm. We will lift up rugs. We will get in there and make sure there's dust bunnies. Move couches, move beds. All of that. 
everything is cleaned up so that the cleaner is just maintaining that deep clean. And how often do you, would you say we do that? We used to deep clean the house once a month. Now it's about once every other month because our cleaner is so good. But we get in there, we lift the rugs. Yeah. It's not a full deep clean every other month, but like we go to our house. So at, often. <laughs> yeah, so often, obviously because we have a YouTube channel about it. But if we didn't, I would want to go every two to three weeks. And in that time period that we're there, I would look at all of the maintenance stuff. I would say, you know, like, is all this stuff still working? The things that guests can find aren't there. Dust bunnies under the bed. Yeah. Right? Like cleaners can only do so much and you as the homeowner are responsible for the things that people might find. Yeah. Like we were at an Airbnb doing a photo shoot and I don't know how I ended up looking under the bed. I think it was the angle we were laying at mm -hmm. and there was a bottle cap under the bed. And like it's a water like, bottle cap. It's like, I get it. Cleaners are so busy. It's easy to miss. You know, mm -hmm. but I saw that and I was like, oh, okay, we need pictures under the bed. So we had our cleaners start sending us photos under the bed. Yeah, yeah. I and we why had, I got we had friends tell us that a guest complained because they were doing yoga and they saw dust bunnies under the bed. Yes. So it's like, you never know what your guest is going to see. And this is why we suggest going to your property very often. And when you're there, every, like once every other month, do a, do a clean that your cleaners wouldn't do. In the vein of cleanliness, we are also always on the lookout for any kind of bugs, spiders. We're out here in the desert. Like yeah. there are weird things that pop up. Spiders this big. It's just crazy. I just got the chills thinking about it. But yeah. because we have so many bugs out there, we combat it with Pesty. We've mm -hmm. talked about them in the past. It's a pro grade product for a fourth of the cost of a normal pest control company. That's why we love it. We've been able to just say goodbye to the bugs and it's super easy to use. It only took us like 15 minutes to apply. We have a 1300 square foot house and we did all of the windows and around the doors and around the perimeter of the entire house and the garage because a lot of times that's where the pests get through is the garage. It is kid and pet friendly, which we love. Obviously we have a short term rental. We invite people and their pets into our home. We wanna make sure that they are taken care of. And what we love about Pesty is they send you customized treatments for where you live. And Pesty only sends you what you need and gives you the instructions on how to apply it so you can minimize the effect on the environment and the honeybees. And you've gotta make sure you wear long sleeve, long pants, and they provide you with the gloves. Pesty has a 100% money back satisfaction guarantee, so they'll do whatever it takes to get rid of your bugs and make you happy. It's great to have peace of mind that like guests aren't going to show up and there's just going to be random bugs in the house because our home, I don't know about your guys', but our home will sometimes sit during the slow season. Yeah. So there's four or five days that... It's just anything can get in there. Yeah, so we like to have peace of mind with Pesty. It's awesome, it's DIY, just like us. Makes sense. Yeah. On the note of our house sitting between guests for four to five days sometimes during the slow season, one thing that we have done throughout this entire last year is we have paid our cleaner to go. Mm -hmm. So let's say we have a guest check out on Sunday. We don't have a guest checking in until Friday. Yeah. We literally did this today. Yeah, we had our cleaner go out and just vacuum up the floors because it can get really windy out there mm -hmm. and there's dust just settling in. Once she gets there, she sends us pictures of everything, shakes out like the the, the pillows. pillows. And just make sure there's nothing hidden anywhere. No damage that the guest might walk into. Yeah. And this is rare that we do this, but when there has been a long period of time, this is something that we do. We pay her an extra fee and that comes out of our own pocket, our own profit. But to us, I think that a five-star review is way more valuable yeah. than a guest showing up. Just hoping that it looks okay if it's been baking for a week. Yeah. And also, when it's slow season for our cleaner, I feel like this should go in our cleaner section. Yeah. When it's slow season for our cleaner, this helps with her pay. Having her go, it's also guaranteeing her work. Yeah. That's our take on it. So it helps them, it helps us, it helps our guests. So that's just something that we've done. And while it is not the best financial on paper, we think that the five stars that we get from these reviews will lead to further business. Mm -hmm. So it's an investment, we think, in keeping revenue coming in mm -hmm. for and years to come. Growing. Yeah. yeah. 
we've talked about this before. We do not nickel and dime our guests. Mm. We don't ask for money if they ask for early check in. We don't ask for money for late checkout. Yeah. We've never done that. I think our perspective on it is make the guest as happy as possible and want to come back. Yeah. Like, really, recurring guests is wonderful. We have somebody that comes every November. That's wonderful. If you have people coming back and trusting your business, I loved Nordstrom growing up. I couldn't really mm -hmm. shop there very often, but as I got older, I knew Nordstrom had this amazing customer service. And if I got yeah. something at Christmas and I forgot that I needed to return it or exchange it, I still could six months later, their customer service was so great. Yeah. So that's kind of my mentality on the check-in, check-out or nickel and diming over small little things that may get broken or stolen on accident whatever it may be, that's just our philosophy. And you know what, hotels don't ask for that. So yeah. we're obviously in competition with them. People are going back to hotels. Yeah. So we're doing the best we can and making it work for both of us. And yeah. that's the name of the game. So, and if you have a different opinion on this, please let us know in the comments down below, like we and said. And why. Yeah, yeah, and why. We, we wanna have an open dialogue about this stuff. The last thing that we wanna cover is something that we think uh, just applies to all of us hosts in a broad stroke. What we had written down was a simple checkout. As a house, it's way different than a hotel. So now that we are in direct competition with hotels, we need to make sure that our checkout is simple. Just make sure all the doors are locked, the lights are off, the ACs are off. So all you have to do is just put your trash in the bin outside. The only reason that we ask our guests to do this is because if they ate stinky food, our entire house will Sounds smell like, like that if we have a same day flip. Yeah. So the reason that we ask people to take trash out is it's better for the next guest. And oh, and we don't we don't have a dishwasher. I, we still don't have a dishwasher, you guys. That's so, on us. We understand that. Yes. But we do ask that you do your dishes. At least have them on the drying rack. Yeah. So that's it. Three things. Yeah. And I mean, you should lock people's doors anyway. But whatever. It, it, anyway, <laughs> simple checkout. It's pretty simple. Because we are in direct competition with hotels, we need to think about Airbnb as a hotel chain, Yeah. right? We are all in this together. Mm -hmm. And if somebody has a bad experience at your Airbnb, they, they might mm -hmm. think poorly of Airbnbs in general, and that might drive people back to hotels. And there's a lot of people that have come into the Airbnb game just for the money, mm -hmm. and they don't care. Yeah. And when that falls away, the trust falls away and people go back to hotels. Having a horrible guest doesn't mean you have to counter that with being a horrible host. Mm -hmm. That will leave a bad taste in their mouth. So what we like to try to do is resurrect the situation in any way we can. It's not an eye for an eye. And that goes back to the customer service of it all. Yes, the customer can be wrong, but the way you handle the situation is everything. That will help everyone. Because mm -hmm. if you're just in constant combat with a bad guest, Again, like he said, people won't be using Airbnb anymore. We know that if a guest leaves our house and they have a great experience, they're more likely to go and book another Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that we like to keep in mind is how can we help others, not just by talking about this stuff on our YouTube channel, but like how can people have a positive experience at our house so that they go and have another positive experience? with not charging people for early check-in, late check-out, with having a simpler check-out sheet, with having a clean house, with making sure that your property is the best that it can be and getting more five-star reviews, comes the overall experience at your at Airbnbs. And this leads to a healthy ecosystem for all of us. It's all for one. Like we're not, these aren't just individual homes. This is, an experience that we want to make sure that is a five-star experience on our end so that other hosts benefit as well. Yeah. And yeah. that is really our hub. Like that's where we make the most money from our business. We mm -hmm. also have our direct booking website and Verbo, but Airbnb is number one for us. And yeah. it is for a lot of you watching. Yeah. So just making sure that like Michael said, Airbnb is an ecosystem. If you're ruining it for your guests, you're also ruining it for all of us. Yeah, this is why we've put such an importance on the five-star reviews that we get are better for the lifeblood. They are the lifeblood of our business mm -hmm. over nickel and diming, making more profit and Being all that right stuff. right in a conversation yeah. with a guest, all of that. It just... 
And unless your play is the short-term play to get in, to get out, that's fine. But ours is more of a long-term play where we want to have repeat guests. We want people to tell their friends about our property. Yeah. We want to create just a great experience. This is how we got to 100 five-star reviews, Yeah, we think. <laughs> Obviously, there's a million factors that go into it. We've had great guests. Yeah, we really there, have. There might be guests out there that are just giving you a headache and are nightmares, but you should look at, okay, is my property set up to attract those guests? Because you really get what you put out. Obviously, there are bad guests out there. We've had great guests. We've been super blessed. Let's keep it up. Let's get to 200. Yeah, let's see if we can get to 200. When we did our last five-star review video, I was like, oh my God. I did, what did we hit? Are we jinxing this? What were we at, 50? 75, maybe? Yeah, we're here. We're here and we... You can be too. It's stressful every time we see the review come through. We're, we're like, like, can we hit 100? Like, why is it so silly that you think like that? But yeah, we were aiming yeah. for 100 five-star reviews, which is dope. Yeah. We did get four and a half on value before we got our hot tub. And yeah. I believe when we had that lady say that we needed better cutlery, which we upgraded. Yeah. So, haven't had that a four and a half since. Yeah. Let's keep it up. Let us know in the comments if you've gotten to 100 five-star reviews. Let's celebrate together. If yeah. not, all good. Tell us why you think you didn't get to 100 five-star reviews. And also, if you are thinking about getting into Airbnb, we have a link in our bio that you can sign up with this link, and then you can chat with us back and forth. We can check out your listing. We can help you out. If you sign up with the link down below, you get 40 bucks. We also get a kickback, but we hope this information that we've given you has been valuable. Yes. So thank you guys so much for watching. And we will see you for phase two of what? The super secret fun project thing. Yes, and if you don't know here, we have DIY'd our entire house, short-term rental, and we have been continuing to add to it. We're adding a cool feature to it that we think will be a photo moment, and we have been taking you guys along the journey, so if you are new here, feel free to go back and we'll start from the beginning, or just continue along with next week's episode. Yep, and we will see you then. Yep. Thank you.